We live, we back, man. Welcome, welcome back. This is the Golden Goose DFS show. I am your host, Chandler Blakely, aka Goose. We are the leaders in single entry, three max, and 20 max content, man. So if that's your particular style of play, you found the perfect home for you. But even if it's not, man. We're still one of the best spots you can be in if you're playing NBA DFS, man. The content videos on point every time out, man. Trust me, you want to be subscribed. You want to turn your notification bell on so you know when the content and videos drop. And also, do me one small favor on this snowy Friday here. Hopefully, it's not as much snow where you at, but here in D.C., it's a snowy Friday morning. I need that like button from you all, man. Hit that like button for your boy. Let's get this one to 100. We keep knocking on the door of 100 likes every video. We right there. Let's get this one back up over 100. We fell off a little bit. We was over 100 for a couple of videos. We didn't fell up under. So, you, I'm talking to you. Hit that like button, man. You know you didn't do it. You know, it's no sweat off your back, man. And it gets good karma headed your way. So hit that like button, man. We definitely need it. Thank y'all for tuning in. If this is your first time here, this is my starting five series. I'll give you five plays that's more than likely going to be in my player pool on DraftKings and FanDuel, all right? So, but before we get into that, man, we got my lineup review. Going over my best lineups from yesterday's slate, what we did right, what we did wrong, that sort of thing. So, let's get into it. Uh, yesterday on DK, uh, lost like half of my buy-in, man. Uh, it was definitely a late swap night. You had to position your lineups and build your lineup so you could be able to swap to some of that late news. In my case, and what I told me in the gang over here, we just locked in T.J. McConnell, man. I locked in T.J. I had 100% T.J. McConnell. I just locked him in in every lineup before locking. Figure I adjust and await according to the news. News broke my way. We got McConnell in the starting lineup, so I had plenty of them. Uh, Should have got to some more Matherin, though, if, as, if, as he had a big game out there. But like I said, it was, uh, lost like half of my buy-in. Missed on a few spots, as you can see in this lineup with Julius Randle here. But let's talk about it, man. At the top. Colin Sexton, 16% on, 6,200, man, gave you 46 fantasy points, man. Just, it's just an optimizer play here, man. Those Utah guys, you don't, the only person's minutes who is secure is Lori Marketing, Sexton, Dunn, uh, 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 George, all them guards, man, they keep a nice rotation. Look, uh, last night, Sexton, probably, I didn't watch the game, but I'm guessing Sexton had the hot hand and got a few more minutes, as you can see by this fantasy score. But 46 fantasy points from him was very nice. I got some R.J. Barrett here, 42% on, only 33 fantasy points from him going against the Bulls. Got to some Patrick Williams, trying to get different with my value pieces. As I knew everybody was going to be on G.G. Jackson, everybody was going to be on Bagley, everybody was going back to Gary Trent Jr. So once Patrick Williams got ruled in, I hate that he didn't start, but he was on my radar as a different value piece to get. Only 16% on, but uh, gave me 14 fantasy points ahead. Definitely not enough. Got to some Julius Randle at 8,800, like a lot of people, 36% on. Uh, you really needed Brunson over here as he shouldered the load for these uh, New York Knicks. Brunson, uh, Randle let me down here, only 37 and a half fantasy points here. Got a big game from Vooch at 13% on, almost a 60-burger, big double-double out of him in this spot. Definitely catapulted this lineup up the leaderboard. T.J. McConnell, like I said, I had 100% T.J. McConnell. Just thought he would be one of the best plays on the slate if he got the start. Nice little double-double from him at 38 fantasy points at 32% on. Solid outing from him. I uh, got to some Jalen Williams. You saw me. I talked. I mentioned him in a video last day. He wasn't featured, but definitely wanted to get to some of these Thunder players and going against these Jazz 12% on, he gave you 52 fantasy points from Jalen Williams. And then Marvin Bagley, everybody's chalk, of course, but he did not disappoint, man. Uh, what, 11 X and over here for you on DK, man. 47 fantasy points. Big game from him, double-double. Definitely needed some Marvin Bagley in your lineup last night. That's my best lineup right there. 326 came in with 789th place. This is the $1.20 max over here. Like I said, that was like half my buy-in on DK. Fan duel side, man, two days losing in a row. We got to correct that. That's unusual over here. This is my single entry. Missed the cash lineup over here. But TJ McConnell, once again, like I said, I had 100% TJ McConnell in everything. Uh, 35 fantasy points over here on Fan Duel. De'Aaron Fox, my boy, 
Uh, 20% on, gave us 42 fantasy points. Just an okay outing. I'm still waiting on that big eruption game from him. He didn't hurt me. I had a lot of De'Aaron Fox, too. That was my uh, pay-up option, trying to get different from some of the other guys everybody was going to. But uh, he didn't give me a big enough game as they lost somehow here to these Pacers. Went back to Gary Trent. Definitely was a fail. I like the spot for him. Chicago give up the most threes. He's a good three-point shooter. Was coming off a good game, but just did not get it done. Only nine fantasy points. Definitely kept us from cashing over here on, on FanDuel. It's my one hiccup, for real. Got to some Luke Kennard over here for Memphis, man. 25 fantasy points from him at 44% on. R.J. Barrett once again. 45% on 33 fantasy points. Benedict Mathurin, like I said, I should have got to more of him. I got to some of them. But 40 fantasy points from him was nice over here on FanDuel at 32% on. Marvin Bagley, once again, 70% on in this contest. Uh, 48 fantasy points. Then Julius Randle with the lead down. Trent and Randle kept this line up from cashing. Got different at my center with Jaron Jackson. Tried to get a little different play here. Got him at 8%. He had a nice game, 41 fantasy points. So we should have cashed over here, but Trent and Randle really hindered us over here on FanDuel. But like I said, we'll get that corrected today. Get back in the money on FanDuel. Let's talk about today's seven-game slate. That Warriors game is postponed once again. So seven games here tonight. Queued up for you already. Let's talk about it. You know you got a lot of questionable tags. We're going to have to worry about this, that, and the third. But we, we'll take the news as it comes and then adjust accordingly. But I give you the slate as I see it right now. At the top, man, I want to look at LaMelo Ball, 8,800. Uh, since his return back to these Hornets, they, uh, the minutes have been there. They're slowly ticking up. The price is slowly falling, though. For some reason, I will buy in. As you see, when he first came back, he was 9500 He didn't give you bad performances. didn't give you super over-the-top performances, but he's been playing well. But for some reason, the price has failed at 8800 here. I would definitely buy the dip over here, especially in this matchup going against the Spurs with no win Biyama, no real rim protection or shot blocking out there. I think that bodes well for LaMelo Ball. I like going to him at 8800 and what should be a great game environment going against these Spurs. At the shooting guard, we to look at Tyler Hero, 7500 here. Going against the Atlanta Hawks, another great matchup here for these Miami Heat. Atlanta Hawks, horrible defense, fast pace. Should be more shot opportunities, more possessions, more uh, more chances to make things happen for Tyler Hero. I know Jimmy Butler is back, but Tyler Hero is the primary scorer for these Heat. He, well, it's hard to say he's the primary scorer. I, I'll say it like this. He's allowed to take the most shots for this Heat team. Man. He's going to get up the most shots. Shot didn't shoot that good last time out. I still would say Jimmy Butler's probably the number one primary scorer, but he likes to fall back and let his other team and, and get his teammates involved. He likes to do whatever the Heat need from him that night. If they need scoring, he'll do it. Defense, he'll do it. So a lot of nice the Hero gets the first crack at scoring and shooting the ball. And if he has it going – they tend to lean towards him and, and Butler fall back. So I like Hero here in this spot. Like I say, he's still going to get the shots up. If he can get those shots falling here at home against this Hawks defense, he can give you a nice performance here at 7,500. I like getting the Tyler Hero in this spot, man. He's the de facto point guard, really, even though he doesn't start at the one. Give me Tyler Hero. At the small forward, we're looking for value, man. And just speaking of that Charlotte Spurs game, I want to look at Julian Champagne here. Now, no Wimbiyama. The Spurs, you always got to worry about how Pop do their minutes and what the rotation is going to look like. It's always a guessing game with these Spurs. But I'm hoping Julian Champagne should see a few more minutes. I'm hoping he could see a few more minutes without Wimbiyama out there. He's going to be in the starting lineup. He should be 15 to 25 minutes, maybe a little more, like I said, with no Wimbiyama. But 15 to 25 is his normal window. Uh, solid player, man. We've seen... In the game so far this season, whenever he gets big minutes, he's capable of paying off this price tag. So I want to try to jump out there, get the Julian Champagne. Like I said, nice matchup here against the Hornets. I'm hoping he pick up a few extra minutes with no women y'all out there. We're just looking for value earlier right now without any news. Julian Champagne is high on that list for me. He's probably going to be high on the update all day, depending on what the Spurs do with this lineup and matchup and how the news come. But definitely want to look at Julian Champagne for a little value piece here at 3500 at the power four spot, I want to look at Zion Williams, 7,500. 
Going against the uh, Phoenix Suns here. Now, this, Vegas has this been a tight game. They actually have the Pelicans slightly favored in this matchup. Now, the only way that happens and the only way to end this game is if their big three can battle with the Suns' big three. So, it's McCullum, Ingram, and Zion versus Bill, Booker, and Durant. If the if the Pelicans are in this game and they're favored to win right now minus two, it's gonna be on the back of Williamson and C.J. McCollum. So I like getting the Zion here. He's another guy. The price tag is just falling on him. I'm gonna buy the dip once again right here. He like I said, he hasn't given you any big games, but he's been solid, man. You saw he was 7,900 earlier in the month. Now he's all the way down to 75 just because he hasn't had those big performances. But I'm okay going to Zion right here at 7,500. Definitely should have a size advantage on the inside if they letting guys like Kevin Durant play them. So I want to look to Zion here. Hopefully live for a nice double-double here in this spot. But give me some Zion William going against these Phoenix Suns. And at the center spot, rounding it out, man, I want to look at DeAndre Ayton. 6,800. Now, we're expecting him to play today. <coughs> Pardon me. He was probable and missed last game because of ice in his neighborhood. He couldn't get out of his neighborhood. So he should be good to go expecting his return. Great game environment going against the Indiana Pacers. This is going to be the game environment you want tonight, guys. This Indiana-Portland game, fast-paced, up and down. Not to bet the bet. Most of their starters are out for Indiana. Portland's missing a few guys. It's just going to be up and down. Hectic play. A lot of turnovers. Rebounds. This is going to be a lot going on in this game. And I definitely want to get pieces of it. I want to look at DeAndre Aiden. Expecting him to be back in the starting lineup right here. If he's not, you know we'll adjust accordingly. All right? There you have it, man. Your starting five for DraftKings. LaMelo Ball, Tyler Hero, Julian Champagne, Zion Williamson, and DeAndre Aiden. Let's go look at FanDuel and see what I'm feeling over there, all right? At the top, man, stand with TJ McConnell. Yes, he in play. Listen, ha uh, I got a couple questions uh, last video or so, but a lot of times, guys, when you see these videos and you see the plays on FanDuel, they, a lot of times they're interchangeable, man. The plays you see on FanDuel are, are good to go on DK and vice versa a lot of times. If it's not, I would specify for certain guys like, hey, this is a FanDuel-only play. But for the most part, they're interchangeable, guys. It's just giving you a glimpse at my overall player pool. Just get that tad bit out the way. So at the top, man, TJ McConnell, 6,600. Yes, he's in play on DK. Definitely going to play him again. I'm expecting them hard to be out, man, once again. So, T.J. McConnell should be back in the starting lineup. They saying something about his spine, his back. That ain't nothing to play with, man. And it's the second game of a back-to-back. -back. I fully expect them hard to miss again. And we get a similar lineup as to last night. Now, the only caveat, the only difference could be uh, Pascal Siakam could play tonight. So, we're going to have to wait on that news. But I don't think that affects T.J. McConnell. I think he's in the starting lineup. I'm going to be happy to ride with him. You know T.J. McConnell. He's a guy who has 40, 50 point upside, live for a double-double. He's good. This matchup should be great for him. Like I said, a lot of turnovers. He's good at getting steals. This should be a great game environment for TJ McConnell. I love going right back to him. He's going to garner some ownership, but just load me up with all the TJ McConnell, all right? At the shooting guard in that same game on the other side. Want to play some Anthony Simons, 7,600. This is the game, people. Trust me. All the fantasy goodness. You, I think you're going to have to have pieces from this game in your lineup tonight. I don't know how many, whatever, but you're definitely probably going to have some, have some pieces from this game. I like getting Anthony Simons, the primary scorer, the star over here for the Trailblazers. Just sign me up. You, But you know what you're getting with Anthony Simons. All right? If the shot is not falling, you in for a long night because he don't provide much in the way of peripherals. But I think we shouldn't have a problem with this shot falling here going against this Pacers defense. Give me some Anthony Simons. At the small forward, I don't mind going right back to Benedict Mathery, man. 5,500. Like I said, we're going to have to wait on that starting lineup again. The only – now, Siakam playing could – affect Benedict Matherin, so this may change. We're going to have to wait on that news, but if Siakam doesn't play, I anticipate we get the same type of run we got last night if those same guys are out, so I'm definitely going to have some energy, uh, interest in Benedict Mathurin here at 5,500. I love this Portland Pacers environment, man. I shouldn't have to tell you that, but if you knew, maybe you are. Get to this game. Get you some pieces from this game, all right? 
at the power four. I want to look at Zach Collins. Now, this is strictly an injury play. If provided he's back tonight, he's a game time decision. He's working his way back. They're without Wimbyama. He should step into the starting lineup if he's back and good to go. So that's what I'm anticipating here. But we're gonna have to wait on that news. If he's not, we can adjust. Maybe we go back to some Barlow. That's a very you know risky chance we play, but. I think Collins is back tonight, and I'm going to play him in my lineups if he is. Now, like I said, if he's out, we'll adjust. But nice double-double threat provided he gets to start in the minutes here going against these Hornets. I'm going to like some Zach Collins provided he's playing. And at the center spot over here on FanDuel, just give me Joel Embiid. I'm not going to play around with it. I am just not. It's a tough matchup against the Orlando Magic. Tougher defense, but Joel Embiid has just been smashing on everybody. I have no worries here. It's fan duel. You only get one son to sign me up for the high scoring center, and we'll work our way around it from there. But there you have it, man. You're starting five for fan duel. Joel Embiid, Zach Collins, Benedict Mathurin, Anthony Simons, and TJ McConnell. Get you some exposure to these guys. Get them in your player pools. They for sure going to be in mind, all right? Y'all know, man, any question, comments, or concern, leave it down below in the comment section. You know I'll respond as soon as I see it. You can hit me up on Twitter as well. It does not matter. Y'all know the motto, man. Chances make champions. Y'all green up. I'll catch y'all next time, all right? Let's get it.